Hello, my name is Alexander Buzamalt and today I'll talk to you about brain stimulation effect on renewal of instrumental avoidance in humans. And to start off, we need to discuss about therapy. The sensitization therapies are a form of behavioral therapy used to treat things such as anxiety disorders, PTSD, phobias, um, and other things. Uh, and this is done through, through repeated presentations of the stimulus the person fears, but without the, uh, the associated aversive consequences. For example, if a child is bit by a dog, then, it then he will learn to asso associate the image of the dog with the pain, and therefore it will make him more likely to engage in avoidance behavior as a defensive mechanism. And we can change this avoidance behavior to, to a process called extinction, which refers to repeated presentations of the conditioned stimulus, the dog in this case, uh, without the aversive consequences. And this, this is effective up to a point, as the person seems to no longer fear that stimulus. However, extinction will not erase the original learning. It will only give it a new meaning, and this new meaning is context dependent. The person retains the information together with the place where it was learned about. And multiple studies have shown this have shown this through what is now known as the renewal effect, which refers to the fact that after extinction, the old association can reappear if the reaction to the stimulus is tested in a different context than that of where the where the extinction took place. Um, and using the previous example, maybe the child no longer fears the dog um, a dog in a therapy room, but once he steps out of into the real world and is faced again with this stimulus, the dog, then then the fear will reappear. And this poses a great problem uh, to exposure-based therapies such as desensitization therapy, where the patient learns to no longer avoid or fear a stimulus only for the fear to reappear. Therefore, in order for people to not be affected by the renewal effect, uh, extinction needs to be enhanced to a point where it can uh, where it can end up being generalized not only in the extinction context but even uh, in other contexts. And one way in which uh, other studies have tried to enhance extinction is through the use of brain stimulation, be it with either transcranial magnetic stimulation or with transcranial direct current stimulation. Both work similarly, and the aim of the previous studies that used them was to stim stimulate the activation of neurons in different parts of the brain in order to improve extinction, the, the extinction process. And in this study, uh, I'll, be, I'll be looking at uh, TDCS. And one of these areas that was looked at uh, was the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, which is thought to play an important role in the retention of extinction learning, and therefore many tried to stimulate it. But the problem with stimulating it is that we can't really reach it by non-invasive means because of its position in the brain. And therefore people have tried to, to reach it uh, by stimulating different areas, um, and this is the reason for the varied results in the literature. However, studies such as Rage et al. 2018 has shown that the ventromedial prefrontal cortex has a functional coupli coupling with another area, the left prefrontal cortex, that by stimulating this area of the brain, we can improve the extinction process. But there is still a gap present in the literature, as no study up till now has, sh has shown that brain stimulation um, can improve extinction and attenuate the renewal effect for the conditioned instrumental avoidance. These being things like the child actively avoiding meeting a dog, uh, for example, this would be an instrumental avoiding, avoidance. And therefore, the aims of the current study, um, the aims of the current the current study are to investigate whether anodal TDCS on the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex will have an effect on the renewal of instrumental avoidance. And we have two hypotheses that you can see here. Uh, the first one is the, the group receiving anodal transcranial direct current stimulation will present a faster extinction than the group receiving sham, the placebo stimulation. The group receiving anodal TDCS will present significantly less renewal of avoidance behavior than the group receiving sham. Um, so the, the, the sample um, was composed of 11 undergraduate st students from the University of Leicester that completed the study in exchange for course credits. Nine of them were females and two were males. And the range uh, ranging from 19 to 23, participants were recruited either via an online system where they signed up in return for course credits or via convenient sampling. 
if uh, five of the participants were assigned to the sham condition, so meaning uh, it was a placebo condition, and six were assigned to the anodal condition. And in terms of methodology, the study used a mixed design adapted from Ursula and Prevel 2019. The participants were uh, randomly, randomly assigned to either the anodal or sham stimulation group but all had to go through the acquisition, instrumental learning, extinction, and testing for the renewal effect. The only difference being that in the anodal group, th that the anodal group received uh, stimulation during instrumental extinction. Now I will go a bit into the procedure of the study so you can understand uh, more when, once we reach the results. So um, each participant is trained with four types of fractals, a fractal being this beautiful image. And two, uh, two would be signaling the presentation of a loud noise that would be uh, given through a, a speakers that the participants would uh, wear. And uh, two would not sig signal anything. It, they would basically signal that there would be no noise. Um, and the sibling were randomly assigned by the, pr by the program. In the first phase, the, acquis the acquisition phase, the participants are tasked to just figure out which sti uh, stimulus signals the presentation of the sound and which does not. One set of stimuli are tested in one context, given by color of background, yellow for example in this case, and the other set in another background, purple. And this would appear uh, on the computer screen. This is the context. And um, Following this, in the instrumental uh, learning phase, participants are presented the stimuli uh, the same way. However, this time they are informed that they can stop the presentation of the loud noise by pressing the space bar one second before the noise. In the extinction phase, the stimulation is started at 2 mA for 20 minutes for the anodal group, while the sham group only receives 30 seconds of stimulation after which it is turned off. In this phase, it is important to note that the context for the set of stimuli is changed. CS1 and CS2 presented in context B and CS3 and CS4 presented in, in A. Finally, the participants are tested for the renewal effect by having the stimuli presented in both contexts. This um, makes an AB, ABB uh, versus uh, ABA comparison, A being the context uh, of acquisition and B the context of extinction. And in terms of data analysis, uh, the main dependent variable uh, was the number of uh, presses of the spacebar, and this would indicate an avoidance behavior. They were pressing spacebar in order to avoid the presentation of the loud noise. And um, these, uh, these were recorded per stimulus in each block, and each block contained two, uh, the presentation of two, two stimuli presentation. So in acquisition, we have we had four blocks in instrumental uh, learning, four blocks, extinction, eight blocks, and then in renewal, one block. The avoidance responses across the two presentations were summed and average uh, the two CS plus and CS minus in each block. So is, is uh, just to mention again, CS plus would signal the presentation of the noise and CS minus would not. In terms of the results, in the acquisition phase, the data were uh, analyzed with a two by four within subjects ANOVA and it revealed the main effect of stimulus and the significant uh, main effect of block and also an interaction between stimulus and block. An analysis of simple effects revealed a large effect of block for CS+, plus, so for the stimulus that signal the presentation of the noise, but a non-significant effect for CS-. Minus. And the interaction thus suggests that acquisition of responses was observed for CS+, plus, but not for CS-, minus, as you can see in the chart. For the extinction phase, a 2 by 2 by 8 mixed ANOVA revealed the main effect of uh, stimulus, but no effect of block or interaction. The main effect of group was marginally not significant, and this suggests that extinction did not prop properly happen in this study, as there was no, uh, no main effect of block. However, there was a significant difference to the number of responses for each CS, spa spacebar being pressed a lot more for the CS is plus than CS is minus, and in addition, although not significant, the anodal group seemed to press the space bar more often than the sham group. But even if the extinction did not um, did not seem to happen here, we still could move uh, on in the in the last phase, the test of re uh, for renewal. Um, the test uh, data were analyzed with a two by two by two uh, mixed ANOVA, which revealed an effect of stimulus and the triple interaction of stimulus, context, and group. 
This was followed up with a 2 by 2 for both anodal and sham groups, which for the ano uh, anodal revealed the main effect of stimulus and the stimulus and context interaction, while the sham group did not reveal any significant result. The interaction was further analyzed for the anodal group with a pair t test split by group, which revealed that the participants in the anodal group pressed the spacebar more than uh, more for the CS plus than, um, than in the acquisition than in the extinction context. So what, what this means is that neither the hypothesis that the stimulation will increase the extinction rate nor the hypothesis that it will attenuate the renewal effect. Um, however, an effect was still found, but in the opposite, opposite direction. During test phase, the anodal group pres uh, presented the avoidance behavior more for the CS plus in the acquisition context than in the extinction context, suggesting that um, stimulating the brain, uh, at least in that area which I looked at, increased the context discrimination and thus led to the renewal effect. But even if um, our hypothesis were not supported and it would not improve, uh, it would not improve ter therapy, this study still demonstrates that the renewal effect can be modified through brain stimulation. And because of how uh, some limitations of the study are that because of how temporally close the acquisition and extinction phases were, the stimulation might have helped the consolidation of the acquisition memory rather than that of the extinction memory. But this study still demonstrates, as I said, that the renewal effect can be modified through brain stimulation. And future studies should, uh, should uh, give more room for extinction to consolidate and separate the phases of such studies to leave, the room, um, to leave room for the consolidation of memory. This should be done in order to avoid having the stimulation interfere and enhance an unwanted process such as the consolidation of feared memories in this case. Thank you for listening.